Hey guys, this is Garrett with Tactical Repair. I'm here to talk to you today about hydraulic heads and common mode of failures and how to repair them and the tools you'll need to do so. So, to start off, we've got a trashed hydraulic head here. It's a HD9100A, which is a common LDT hydraulic head, although they're all constructed generally the same. Um, all parts are pretty well compatible, so if you know how to work on one of these, you know how to work on one of the LDS heads as well. Uh, some of the parts, the main parts that are in this head, I've got laid out here for you. You've got the plunger, which is the center stem. You've got a valve spring. You've got an, an upper and a lower valve spring cup. You've got two valve spring retainers. You've got a hydraulic head button and a hydraulic head retainer or clip as some people call them. Now the most common mode of failure on these is that this clip will either come off or break and drop this button off of the end of your hydraulic head right here. When you lose that, you lose part of the stroke on the plunger or the piston and uh, you don't develop the full fuel pressure you need to pop the injectors. So the main method of failure is that. The second one is that the hydraulic head drive key or the bow tie drive key as some people refer to it as will crack and that will throw your fuel timing off and sometimes the engine will either miss or completely uh, cease to run altogether. Um, the hydraulic head button clip is available through AMBAC or even some of your surplus dealers and this is the part number you'll be looking for and as you can see I have two free hands today since I have a <laughs> wonderful little camera lady here <laughs> and I'm not going to be fighting everything. So that's what you're looking for. If you need them, they're not too expensive and they are available. Um, usually you get lucky and the hydraulic head keeper will not break. It'll just fall off. Uh, but if you're having a no start issue and you keep spinning the engine over, it will crush this clip and break it off. And this is what happens is the ears, and I'll, I'll show you a good one in a minute, the ears break off and then there's nothing to hold it on. So the tools you'll need to deal with this are a three-quarter inch wrench or ratchet and socket, a valve spring compressor, a large flathead screwdriver, and one or two small flathead screwdrivers, preferably with a magnet on the end. It, uh, that's the main thing you need to grab the valve spring keepers with when you're taking it apart. So the way I do this is We've got our hydraulic head here. You've already taken it off of the pump. You've cleaned it up. It's not dripping fuel everywhere. You're ready to go. Um, I've already got one O-ring off of here because this is a, a trashed, uh, just parts hydraulic head. So you'll take your second O-ring off, your lower O-ring, and throw this in the trash. You don't want to reuse these O-rings because they get flattened out. If you try to reuse them, you'll end up leaking fuel into the oil side of your engine and have oil contamination and you know, eat your rod bearings up or throw a rod, one or the other, or both. Uh, once you have that done, you'll uh, probably want to remove your center bolt here, which is what the three-quarter wrench or ratchet and socket's for. And the, the reason you want to do this is because you need to insert something in it to keep the plunger from moving when you're trying to take the valve spring off. So you can use a bolt of uh, whatever length works for you. Just drop it in there so the hydraulic head plunger will hit it and not continue on up when you're trying to remove the valve spring. Uh, the hydraulic head plunger in this one is seized so I don't, I don't have to use that for this video but uh, I think you understand where I'm coming from. And you'll want to flip it over and of course, if your retainer and button is on there, if you've got a broken drive key, you'll want to use a small screwdriver. The, and specifically for this, I've cut a small groove into mine so you can get under the edge of the button. And be very careful to pry it up and remove it. And this is what I was telling you earlier. See, it's got little claws on it that grab when they break, well, the claws are no longer existent. They've been broken off. See, there's your difference there. <clears throat> so, you get that out of the way. Then you 
you're going to remove your button and set it off to the side where it's not going to get dirty or lost. And you'll want to take your valve spring compressor and there's many ways you can do this. Some people even have strong enough fingers to, to just use their fingers and get it off. Me, I don't. So I've got this set up where I can use my vise as a fulcrum. And you'll get uh, Where's it? There it is. You want to use this compressor to compress the valve spring and then use the magnet to remove the keepers. There's your other keeper. Okay. And then carefully release pressure. Then you can remove your valve spring and cups. And this one's kind of nasty. It's got old congealed oil on it. And once you have that off, you've got to remove your gear shield. Now the gear shield is very thin steel and it's, as you can see, it's already bent up. Um, this came off of that pump that somebody had tried to remove it from without having it timed properly so it tore it up. But You'll want to use a medium screwdriver and very carefully get between the shield and the gear and do your best not to deform it. Pop it loose, and you are going to deform it a little. There's, there's no getting around that, uh, but they are easy to straighten. So you go around the bottom, and there it's loose. Now you'll notice that on these shields there are indentations, and that's what keeps it on this lip. Now there are. Uh, where is it? There's one. This one right here that is smaller than the rest. And that small one right there, you can see it's just a little ding in the side. It's been uh, staked with a, a punch or something of that sort. It goes into this small indentation in the housing right there. So there's only one way to put it on. I mean, you can put it on wrong, but uh, there is that to guide you to put it back together properly. Uh, once you get that apart, it reveals your bow tie drive gear or drive key. And you can remove that with well, usually a magnet when they're not all gummed up. But uh, this one is. And it is really gummy. Or yeah, you can just pull the gear up. Now what happens with these is they will crack, usually in opposite corners. When that cracks, well, it can no longer grab the, um, the plunger and turn it. I mean, it, it may still turn it a little bit, but it'll be out of time with the gear, and that's what throws your injection timing off. So, you can see on the plunger itself that you've got a, a D-shaped side, and then you've got three flat sides. And on the drive key, you've got the same. You've got a D-shaped side, and you've got three flat sides. So this can only be put on one way. You can't get that out of time. You've also got this tit on the top that fits into this keyway on the gear up top, so uh, it all it all helps you not to not to install it improperly. And then you've got uh, you know, it tells you on top of the gear how it's supposed to go on. You know, align with plunger, flat with flat, and. Uh, some of them say this side down or this side, I don't remember. Uh, but you can get these from AMBAC as well if they break. And uh, some of the dealers carry them like uh, Big Mike's Motor Pool. I think they're 30, 40 bucks. Uh, and it, it's, it's definitely easier to replace this than it is to pay four or 500 bucks for a hydraulic head. Uh, if you can 
handle this. So say your drive key is broken, you've replaced it, you're going to put it back together. If you can hang on to it. Unlike me. <laughs> Make sure it all goes back together securely. Your gear is fully seated. Then you're going to replace your shield, which, uh, okay, there's my dimple. You want to align that. And you can push it down on there. Usually you can't push it down with your fingers but sometimes they do go so you'll want to use either a small dead blow hammer or rubber face mallet and yeah that's good now if you do bend it a little it's all right this one is really being obstinate. Good thing this one's a parts one. This is that one edge that doesn't want to go back on. Probably because this one's already been bent all the shit. Yeah. It's destroyed. Anyway, really bad example, but once you get it back on, you want to make sure you don't have any contact with the gear and usually they're just slightly bent you can use your screwdrivers to make sure there's no contact um, anyway you get the idea I've never had this much problem but I usually don't work on them where somebody's already destroyed I'm trying to time it wrong anyway so, there's the idea. You want to make sure it's back on properly and it's not touching the gear. That's the only thing you got to worry about with the shield. Uh, then you'll want to take your valve spring and your cups. You see these are two different types. You've got one that's kind of flat and one that's a cone. This is your lower one. This goes by the hydraulic head button. The flat one goes up against the gear and the drive key. So you'll put that one on first. Then you'll put your valve spring and your other cup back on. You'll take your compressor, move the head back to where you need it. Push it back down. Drop your retainers back in. And then release it. Bump it a couple times, make sure they're seated. Inspect it and make sure it's not ready to come out. Sometimes uh, when you release it, they'll pop out of place. And you'll take your button Drop it back on the plunger. And we'll take your retainer and line it back up. Put one claw on, pop the second claw on, and then the third. You shouldn't need to use any tools to do that. If you do, you'll probably break it. Just use your fingers. And you'll want to make sure everything rotates fine. The gear should turn easily. You should be able to take your head and push down on it on a table or bench or something else that's solid. In the hydraulic head, you'll feel it um, compress and retract. Uh, as long as everything works smoothly and moves properly, uh, you should be good to go. Um, when you're putting it back together, make sure that your scored key is back where you started. You can make a mark on the shield before you take it apart if you want. That, help some people um, otherwise you'll have it off a tooth or two when you drop it back in the pump but you know, 
not much more to it than that. The parts are available, they're not expensive. Uh, hydraulic heads are quite expensive. Um, and the only other way they fail is if the plunger itself either wears out or galls. So these are the most common failures and that's why I chose to address these with y'all today. Uh, you wanna put your center bolt back in, of course, before you put it on the truck and put all your injector lines in or you won't be able to get to it. And uh, I think, I'm not mistaken from memory, you want to check the TMs, but I think the torque on this center bolt is about 45 foot-pounds, so uh, check that, make sure I'm not misleading you on accident, but uh, that's about all there is to repair in a hydraulic head. If there's any other problem than that, you're not going to be able to fix it, so I uh, hope this was helpful to you guys. I'd appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe if you hadn't already, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.